mind is racing with thoughts. Racing. I'm going to do a little bit now. Quietly. Just for a minute. <laughs> oh. It's hard. Very difficult for me to be quiet. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. I just tell you, I'm on the north side of the hill fort, progressing up, up and up and up. I'm going to do the real horrible muddy track all the way until I get to the fort steps. It's quite a while to go yet. Not many people out there. I mean, in one way, the kids, young people, have been trained to stay in because they wanted to, to play on their games. But what happens when these people that have got all the gadgets can't afford their latest phone? They're going to be teased. Yeah, teased. It's like the Joker, isn't it, out of that film? Batman. Evil. What I'm going to do is place, say, a video like I've done today on and just remind people that I'm just jumping forward to recent video. Because we're in a lockdown. Sort of. Only like food shops and essential shops are allowed to stay open. Um, chemists, some supermarkets, well, most supermarkets. I'm surprised Mountain Shop hasn't stayed open because people still need clothes like winter coats, shoes, socks. Um, Tesco's don't do all that, you know. I bought myself, fortunately I bought myself a nice pair of walking, walking shoes for dry weather. Um, trainers almost. Because um, I've still got a load of shoes I can wear for these conditions. Um, yeah. It's very bad here, isn't it? I'm just trying to decide which way to go. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to risk going up there. Run up. Yeah, so what's going to happen when people can't... These people have got these sort of jobs. I mean, lots of people have lost a job. Shopkey, people that work in shops. Pubs. Um, then there's restricted hours, so... Some people have been made redundant because they don't need them all in the banks and that. Um, or they'll be on shorter hours. What about all the people in debt? All the people that got mortgages, got their normal bills that they pay. Everyone's probably up to the hilt in their credit cards. We've all been there because we were brought up in a plastic society in the 90s. And um, in the noughties, we were saturated with offers, saturated with plastic, credit. Advertising. And it still goes on. Do you know, they're still advertising for people to go on holiday. They're still doing all these food programs when the world is starving. That's the worst thing I hate about TV. I refuse to watch a food program where you've got these guppy people in their kitchens making these little tiny presentations with stuff no one's ever heard of and they're all laughing and smiling 
and drinking champagne. Now that is throwing stuff in people's faces. We are an evil planet. We've got people starving to death. You know? Right, I think you better go over that side now. Um, so when these people I talk about who have been living in a bubble for a long time, a bubble of, it was sort of privilege in a way. People want to come to England because we've got all this, all this stuff, you see. It's seen people think, that, true, that the pavements are lined with gold. We've got herds of people wanting to come here. We've got a welfare state. We've got benefit system. But it doesn't really show the real side of things to people like that. And when all the Polish people came, they were welcomed. They would do all the jobs they said that English people wouldn't do work in the fields. Um, but they soon cottoned on to how awful it was over here. And a lot of them went, up, went back to Poland and Bulgaria and other places because they were treated badly. If they did get into any difficulties. Um, yeah, there's um, a whole kaleidoscope of issues um, in society anyway. And they've been going on for since the beginning of time. Power and control. We're not going to stop it overnight. I did think at one point that England was, and Scotland and Wales, improving though. Following the Second World War, the National Health Service, the Education Act, <sighs> opportunities for people to have a higher education, jobs, <laughs> the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and to a certain extent the 90s, and to a certain extent the noughties. <sighs> But I did think at one point, in the, in the late 90s and the noughties, that we were being good. We were evolving towards a fairer society. That's what I felt. I really felt that. I'm not quite sure where I'm going, if I should have gone down there, I can't remember. I'm following this top better truck up here. So, I was so disappointed when Cameron and Osborne came into power. And Ian Duncan Smith and people like that started to run and rule. And the people that suffered were those on low incomes, unemployed disabled, the whole scene started to change. The whole scene. So for the last 10-12 years, people have been starting to get battered in the lower groups. And those aspiring still would look down on those groups, condemn them for having no money, for no job. Now look at the tables have turned a bit. Some people are forced for the first time in their lives onto universal credit or legacy benefits. Out of jobs, out of work and all that sort of thing. They're getting an insight in a strange sort of way to the other side of the coin. We don't want people to be um, sort of punished in this way to make them have an insight, to be enlightened. We don't really want that. This is going to be really dodgy going down here, by the way. Um, but it 
it might be what's needed to make people realise who's ruling them for a change instead of joining them or trying to join them because they've been kicked out of the club a lot of people now I knew her very early in life very young I was when I started to realise there were differences and in inequalities I'm not going into that now but I learnt very early and um, so I've been sort of aware and conscious and I've met people who've helped develop my knowledge and more awareness of the global problem. You see, this is why they get rid of um, the intellectuals and people with any sort of influence on the 1% in a, what they see as an unsavoury way. Um, I've got a feeling that bloke's following me, you know, with that big, big dog. So I've got to try and negotiate all this muck. They're probably not far away. Anyway, I'm going to turn off for a minute because it's getting dodgy.